Oh, superfoods. It seems that in an era of TikTok, the definition has shifted from pomegranates and blueberries to influencer endorsed detoxes and supplements. It's no longer enough to just eat whole fruits and veg. We need to add a bunch of magic elixirs, powders, and other expensive ingredients into our daily routine. TikTok is full of daily routines stacked with these influencer approved extras, but are they actually worth the hype? As we like to say, there's a lot to unpack. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some of the hottest foods in the influencer wellness scene. Breaking them down as usual with science and sass. And you could pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. And if you guys are not already subscribed here, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Now, I just wanna get something straight here, folks. Superfood is a marketing term. Yes, some foods are more nutritionally dense than others, but crowning certain foods as super suggests that as long as we get those magical unicorns into the diet, nothing else matters. But nutrition is actually a long game. It's not about a single food or meal or day. It's about the big picture over time. And the same way no one food can ruin your health, no one food can improve it either. Not to mention, when we drop the moral superiority of using the term superfood, we can find better balance with all foods, not just a select few. That said, I'm all about taking an additive approach to eating, and I can appreciate that certain foods and supplements can help to complement our health and wellness goals. So today I'll be breaking down the evidence on some of the most common influencer approved superfood trends and whether or not they help or have the power to harm. First off, let's talk about bone broth. But all I know is it's good for your gut health, it's good for your gut lining, it's good for inflammation, it keeps inflammation down, and which overall just like will connect to the health of the rest of your body, good for your hair, skin, nails. So for anyone who is new to the bone broth craze, it's essentially the aftermath of slow cooking animal bones and connective tissue with water and vinegar to produce a brothy liquid. And adding vinegar is essential to this process because it's what helps to extract the vitamins and minerals from the tissue. But not all bone broth is created equal. For example, using bone marrow in the preparation yields a broth that is high in vitamins A and K, as well as minerals like zinc, iron, boron, selenium, and omega-3s. Whereas connective tissue provides compounds like glucosamine and chondroitin, which may help to improve joint health. As for the claims around a bone broth and improved gut health, the research here is unfortunately limited as we really only have in vitro and animal research. But the evidence that we do have suggests that the gelatin in bone broth may help to improve our gut health by protecting and healing the gut lining. Gelatin also binds to water, which may help to move food through the digestive tract and improve regularity. We also have some early research linking glutamine, which is an amino acid in gelatin, with improving gut permeability. As to the inflammatory effects, we do know that the amino acids in bone broth like glycine and arginine have antioxidant properties and may therefore provide anti-inflammatory effects. And of course, because bone broth is loaded with collagen, it may also be beneficial for the integrity of skin, hair, and nails. But I'm gonna be diving deeper into collagen in a hot minute, so stick around if you wanna hear my thoughts on that. So my hot take is, I say bone broth is definitely worth a go. It's rich in protein and other vitamins and may provide some health benefits, but ultimately we still need more research to understand how much we would need to consume for better health. Next up, let's talk apple cider vinegar. It's finally been 30 days and I am way less bloated than I used to be. I've lost six pounds and my digestive health is the best it's ever been. Okay, so weight loss is one of the most common claims tied to drinking apple cider vinegar, but is it really all it's cracked up to be? Well, 
When we look at the research, the evidence is pretty mixed. Most research that does link apple cider vinegar to weight loss seems to suggest that it likely has to do with the acetic acid content, which appears to increase feelings of fullness, which may lead to weight loss over time. So for example, one small study found that consuming vinegar with a meal increased satiety and caused participants to eat about 250 calories less a day. Similarly, other studies have found a modest increase in weight loss with higher intakes of apple cider vinegar. However, we also know that other vinegars like red wine vinegar and balsamic vinegar actually contain more acetic acid than apple cider vinegar. So in theory, we would likely see the same weight loss results from using any other vinegar variety. Either way, most of the studies on apple cider vinegar and weight loss are very small, short term, only show very modest weight loss and didn't actually look at drinking apple cider vinegar in isolation, but rather alongside or immediately after a meal. Plus, in most studies, participants were also on a calorie-restricted diet, so it's really hard to conclude if the weight loss was a result of the diet or the apple cider vinegar or a combination of both. On top of that, some research suggests that the actual reason for a subjective feeling of fullness after drinking vinegar is because of its nausea-inducing effects, which naturally would reduce the desire to eat. I did not sleep for one second last night, and I cracked the bottom of the toilet bowl. Oh, God. We also want to be cautious of the frequency of drinking apple cider vinegar, as it can wear away at our tooth enamel. As for the alleged digestive benefits, apple cider vinegar does contain small amounts of the prebiotic fiber pectin, which feeds the good gut bacteria and may help with regularity over time. However, you can actually get a lot more pectin from just eating an actual apple than you would from taking a shot of apple cider vinegar. Now, it also does contain some live bacteria if you're buying the unpasteurized option, but we don't know what strains of bacteria or if it contains a clinically significant dose. And spoiler alert, it almost certainly does not. It's also acidic, so a lot of folks suggest that it's helpful for those dealing with low stomach acid, which in turn may again theoretically reduce bloating, but an ounce of vinegar is literally nothing compared to the two liters of gastric juices your gut produces every day, so yeah. 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 Like it's literally a drop in the bucket. Not to mention we have much stronger, more evidence-based supplements and medications that can help with hypochloremia if that is an issue. Above all the alleged benefits, I would say that probably the strongest is that it may have some benefits for blood sugar management. So hot take here, folks. Again, I don't think apple cider vinegar will do anything dramatically magical, but because it is inexpensive and may have some benefits in certain scenarios and certain populations, it may be worth a try. I do not, however, recommend taking shots of it thanks to the effect it's gonna have on your teeth, so you're much better off just adding it to salads or sauces a little more regularly. Next up, let's talk about greens powders. My hormonal acne has nearly completely gone. My eyes are literally brighter and whiter. I also feel so much less bloated and way more energy. So I actually have a whole video on greens powders, which you can watch right here for a more in-depth deep dive. But for today's video, we're gonna keep it short and sweet. So generally speaking, powdered greens can contain up to 75 plant-based ingredients, which obviously sounds great in theory, but I do like to think about greens powders kind of like a multivitamin that can help to fill in some nutritional gaps, but not as a replacement for real fruit and veg. And ultimately, there's something that greens powders can do that actual food can't. So if you're already eating a varied diet, then adding greens powders is probably obsolete. But as far as the digestive health claims go, it isn't really black and white considering just how complex and individualized gut health really is. So for instance, a lot of greens powders are formulated with gut health ingredients like digestive enzymes, probiotics, prebiotics, and fiber. But because our microbiomes are extremely diverse, your digestive system may not respond the same way to greens powders as someone else's. For example, a lot of people dealing with digestive issues and bloating are sensitive to high 
high FODMAP foods. So greens powders may actually make your symptoms worse in this case because they're often loaded with high FODMAP ingredients like inulin fiber, chicory root extract, garlic extract, fructo oligosaccharides, apple powder, asparagus powder, and shiitake mushroom powder. It is also important to note that not all probiotics are made equal as well. So if you're turning to greens powders to reduce bloating, there is a potential chance that it may contain a probiotic strain that actually could do the opposite for you. Ultimately, it really does come down to trial and error and finding the right product for your unique needs. But again, it's absolutely not a replacement for gut-friendly foods that naturally contain fiber, probiotics, and prebiotics. As for the claims around increased energy, at best, powdered greens only provide like 50 calories per scoop, and calories are the body source of energy. So we wouldn't really be deriving significant energy from the calories in greens powders, unless of course we're mixing it into like a smoothie or juice. Sure, some powdered greens might contain caffeine from like green tea extract, which may increase perceived energy levels, but this is really no different than just drinking a caffeinated beverage like coffee, green tea, or matcha. My hot take is if you struggle to get all the nutrients you need in the day, Sure, a greens powder, like any multivitamin, may help to fill the gaps. But read those ingredients carefully and pay close attention to your symptoms when trying them out because ultimately they can be triggering for some sensitive folks. Moving on, everyone's obsession right now, collagen. <sighs> So collagen is a protein that is essential for the structural integrity of our skin, bones, muscle, hair, and tendons. As we age, the production of collagen declines naturally, resulting in the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Now we do have quality research suggesting that collagen supplementation may help to improve skin elasticity. And this is likely because collagen is rich in amino acids like hydroxyproline, proline, and glycine, which research suggests are absorbed uniquely as dipeptides and are key to signaling skin cell regeneration and hyaluronic acid synthesis. But the million dollar question one million dollars is whether or not consuming collagen is any better than consuming any other protein. Since we know that technically collagen can be made in-house from the amino acids in the protein that we eat as well as from vitamin C and we know that eating enough protein can also synthesize dipeptides as well. The research has really only started to dive into this distinction, but we are definitely left with a lot of questions. For instance, one study comparing collagen to protein did find that participants taking collagen supplements had improvements in skin elasticity compared to folks who just ate the basic protein diet. However, the study design wasn't ideal. Basically, they looked at elderly patients and gave one collagen, and in the other group, they actually lowered their protein intake to match that of the collagen group. In reality, we would want to see the protein increased because we're talking about adding a supplement, not replacing whole food protein in the diet. The elderly participants also had protein intakes way below what we would see in most health conscious young adults. So yeah, there's a lot of gaps to be filled here. My hot take is that I used to be a lot more skeptical, but I do think we have a lot more clues now that collagen may be uniquely beneficial. We still have a lot of unanswered questions, namely if we eat ample protein and not just enough, do we need a collagen supplement as well? But I think your best bet would be to choose a collagen protein that also contains like whey or pea protein rather than choosing collagen instead of a higher quality protein powder or whole foods. But next, let's talk about the oh so popular CMOS. CMOS has 92 out of 107 minerals that we need in our body to properly function and it has literally cleared up my skin, my gut, every, it's amazing. So CMOS is arguably the newest and hottest superfood gaining traction in wellness circles. With influencers and celebs singing its praises for improving skin, increasing libido, regulating menstrual cycles, boosting energy, the list goes on. And yes, CMOS is rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, which are essential to human health. But as I said with greens powders, if you're already eating a balanced and varied diet, CMOS is unlikely to do anything miraculous for your health that 
food isn't already doing. It's also worth noting that CMOS has yet to be FDA approved, and there's very little research to support its efficacy. As for the research that we do have, one animal study found that CMOS may help to improve gut health and immunity in rats due to its prebiotic properties. And we know that seaweed in general may benefit gut health as it's rich in a source of fiber and live bacteria. So any positive effect that CMOS may potentially have on our gut may also translate to improvements in skin health because skin is a reflection of our gut. And the same thing goes with immunity because our immune system is largely housed in the gut. However, it's worth noting that there is a huge variability in nutrition in sea mosses, just depending on the environment in which they were grown. And that's true for all seaweeds and sea vegetables. Iodine content in particular can vary very drastically in seaweeds. So you may potentially be exposed to a larger than expected dose of iodine, which can negatively impact the thyroid in some folks. There's also the risk of heavy metal exposure in seaweeds like sea moss because they tend to absorb heavy metals in high amounts. The toxicity risk does appear to be low with one study showing that the heavy metals absorbed in eight types of seaweed did not pose serious risks to health. But it's still really worth pointing this out as I've seen some folks on TikTok intentionally overdosing on sea moss and consuming a lot more than what is indicated, which is something I never advise. If supplements work, they are not benign. Not to mention because the supplement world is the wild west and there's not a whole lot of regulation, it's often hard to know exactly what we're getting. And on top of that, CMOS also has a hefty price tag with most jars ranging from 30 to $40. What? So my hot take is from what I've seen, CMOS isn't the most pleasurable part of most people's supplement routine. And I don't think that the benefits are so overwhelming that they justify the price tag and the daily torture session. So I personally stick to a balanced diet and with evidence-based vitamins, probiotics, and prebiotic supplements that we know are effective and safe. And finally, let's talk about superfood mushrooms like lion's mane. I'm not gonna tell you the benefits, go and do your research, but here's a little sneak peek. Get onto it. So according to this marketing, lion's mane is the holy grail of health supplements as it allegedly helps to improve everything under the sun, including energy, mood, stress, immunity, gut health, brain health, etc. But can one supplement really do it all? The short answer is... How about new? But let's investigate. So like most plant-derived substances, lion's mane is rich in antioxidants and research has shown that it may have some anti-inflammatory benefits as well. But like I've basically been saying this whole damn video, you don't need to exclusively get your antioxidant fix from lion's mane alone or really any other supplement, especially if you're already eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, which contain a lot of antioxidants. Now it is true that lion's mane may be comparatively more beneficial compared to other mushrooms, with one study suggesting that it had the fourth highest antioxidant activity compared to 14 other mushroom species. But again, antioxidants are found abundantly in a variety of other foods and not just mushrooms. Now, one thing that may be particularly unique about lion's mane is its potential benefits for brain health, as we have research showing that it may help to relieve anxiety and depression, likely because of some of its anti-inflammatory effects. Other research suggests that lion's mane may protect against Alzheimer's by preventing neurological damage caused by plaques, which is what accumulates in the brain with developing Alzheimer's. However, the majority of this research has been done on rats, so we don't really have a clear idea of how this applies to humans. I did find one small human study which found that taking lion's mane supplements for four months improved mental functioning of older adults who were diagnosed with cognitive impairment. And basically the cognitive function declined as soon as the participants discontinued their use of the supplement. So yes, this could become a lifelong supplement, but I would say that's definitely very promising stuff. As for the immunity boosting claims, there is some research that lion's mane may help to support immunity by stimulating activity in the intestine. But again, this research was done on animals and we still need to get more studies out there to better understand the effect of lion's mane on the gut and our immune system. But like I said earlier, anything that is gonna be good for the gut will benefit the immune system as they are intimately connected. So my hot take here is, 
I say that if brain health is a priority for you, it's probably worth a good try. Although it's definitely not a replacement for other brain boosting behaviors, most notably exercise and stress management. Well, I hope that gave you a little more insight into what supplements or superfoods are worth a buy this year for you. Remember that no one food or supplement can make or break your health. So the bottom line is to always focus on the boring basic aka balance. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below on what you'd like to see me talk about next, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!